Boom. Quick one. Quick one. Let's uh, let's try to be have a quick one on this segment here, huh? <laughs> yeah, it laughs all around. What, what a big coach said. He said off air is like, I really don't want to get into a bunch of the Packers backfield here, and I'm like, well, j- just don't. <laughs> I said I don't want to get cranked up on those <laughs> Packers running backs. And, well, don't do just it. Then. Don't do it. You, you, you're the uh, holder of your own key. Mm-hmm. All right. Welcome back. You can find us on uh, the Twitter at the FF Dynasty. You can find Jay Wayne. And his personal handle at Jay Wayne's World. You can check out that bulbous head of his. Jeez, uh, he's a big brain. You can see Uncle Big Co at Dynasty Big Co, and you can see me at IMC Myers. You guys ready to finish this thing up? We're gonna start with Larry Legend here, not Larry, Larry Bird, but Larry Fitzgerald. Maybe not quite on Larry Bird's level of legendary status, but yes, it's to be debated. Strong guy, good dude, awesome dude. He's back. Larry's up from 122 to 76. <laughs> Just the 34-year-old 50, 50 ADP bump. Gets left for dead every season, and then yep. when he gets back in, you better you better go grab me some Larry because it's about to be a party. You can look back on the graph or just look at it through the uh, the number setting here on the DLF ADP. You can see the same thing happened to Fitzgerald last year. Off season plummeted into the early 100, 120 mark. And then when he says, I'm coming back to play, shoots right back up in the 80s and the 70s. To, to prove out Big Co's theory of, you know, drafting a bunch of running backs and then just cobbling together wide receivers um me and larry, him, no better place to right. do that than well, larry me and, me and him have larry fitz and marquise lee and that's pretty much it was pretty much our receivers all year in a league and we just beat everybody up with running backs and it wasn't even we were just crushing slapped everybody them slapped them up so i mean larry fitz is good as money in the bank as your as your receiver getting out there especially if he's your two Give me that all day long. And he could be your one if you had to. Mm-hmm. If you had to. If you had to be. Mm-hmm. Give me him. Oh, he's a one. He's a one for sure. I mean, you, he's maybe he plays a couple more years. Maybe he only plays one year. But as long as he's in there, he's... You ain't he, got nothing to worry about. He's well. super solid. Absolutely. All right. Well, so you got Tariq Cohen is next on the list. He only went from 89 to 82, which I thought there would be a little bit more bite bump than that. Because, I mean, I guess he was already up kind of high. But now, like, I thought that... There's been a just he's been like you said, the coaches loved him every time there's something said about him. It's how good he is and how versatile he is and how he's just going to be used all over the place in a bunch of different ways. I I honestly thought this would be a little higher than it is. Well, at this point, there's so many running backs in front of him. Like you said, the 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 idea of waiting on running backs is still flirted with, but mainly they're gobbled up. And there's there's so many running backs already off the board by the time you get to this 82 ADP. There's really without really seeing it because if he had stayed on any type of par with the way he started the first two weeks of the season with Gavin grabbing catches, he'd be up there. But, you know, Duke Johnson's still behind him, I believe, at this if he I'm, is. You know, I'm obviously Nick Chubb and comes and pushed Duke Johnson back, but But then he uh, got signed to some money. Right. With Cohen Cohen with his with his appeal, with his ability to be flexible and, and catching the ball and being moved all over the formation as to you need to see it and then there'll be a big adp bump but it's just where how far do you go before you actually see anything i'm okay taking a swing here at eight in the 80s here on just a, a guy who could be super electric this is this is cool with me well and this that, is a this is a home run cut on a, a debate when i see this at this point now i'm looking at like you know i was a little bit slow to accept tyreek hill for what he could be and i don't want to be slow to accept cohen for what he could be because so they're not the same guy though like he's not playing wide receiver out there no but he's gonna get snaps even at wide receiver he's and he's gonna get better balls he's, out of the back called a running back fair for my fantasy team better for him to be called a running back I doing think, what he can do i think i gotta take duke over over Tariq. yeah i mean i guess that's i like duke fair enough but i mean i think i think cohen's just a maybe a more electric duke Maybe on probably a, you know, I don't know. He's gonna get more opportunities than Duke this year. I, th- I, th- I think personally, but I mean, they did just we'll pay see what Duke. They, they sure did a decent amount of money. Yeah, they paid. Hey, we got you, Bubba. Paid the heck out of some Jarvis Landry too, though. That's and some Carlos side. Very redundant. And, and they, they drafted, drafted another run back. Yeah, so it's basically, no excuses like this, for the Browns not to go fifteen and one. I like the swing on Cohen. Yeah. <laughs> um, Crowder from seventy eight to eighty seven. Love it. I don't know why, but keep it coming. Yeah, Please well, let keep that it keep coming. sliding. I'm. I'll Get it, make him. That's more catches for me later after I gobble up all the running backs. Cheaper Crowder, better for me. I love it. Little Alex Smith, checking it down to Crowder. Oh yeah, 
Yeah, and could have a different landing spot next year. He's in a contract year. All the motivation to do well coming off an injury. I think if he if he does well this year, I think uh, there's no. I think he's coming back. I think if he proves to be a guy that Alex Smith has chemistry with, I don't think there's any way they can let him. I completely ride whatever. Out. They don't like to keep good players here in Washington. That's true. I completely agree. <laughs> <laughs> I just completely agreed with he both. Plays you well, guys. he's out. Yeah. In case he's like, no, if he does good and Alex Smith likes him, he's keeping him. I completely agree. They don't like to keep good players. I completely agree. <laughs> the Redskins are just a debacle it's over wrong. there of a franchise. They don't know what's going on. But I will say that as bad as they handle the Kirk Cousins situation, I think bringing in Alex Smith is a way to totally redeem yourself. Yeah. In a, in a, as a I dumb, as a dumb and dumber theme, yeah. If you're gonna if you're gonna screw it up and make the quarterback mad and don't he doesn't want to have anything to do with you and there's really at this point there's nothing you can say to make it right and he's leaving and you go and you bring in Alex Smith, that's a way to go and completely redeem it. All right, so Mike Williams didn't get a ton of run last year, but a high rookie draft pick and a guy that the seventh overall Chargers are definitely looking to, you know, get in their lineup and and get him charged up and and producing. He's moved from uh, 71 to 85. Dropped. Yeah, that's what I mean, down, sorry. And this this is before, you know, Hunter Henry's still at 77, so that's before he tore his ACL. This June ADP is not, you know. Reflecting that. Reflecting that. So maybe it comes back up some and, and levels out a little bit. It's hard for me to be unbiased here. It's another Clemson guy. But, I mean, just, I mean, I've watched every – play this guy's ever ran and it uh, i'm i'm super excited to draft him here in this range i mean he's a potential number one dude and he doesn't have to take number one tar he doesn't have to take number one corners he's got keenan over there tyrell's in a contract year travis benjamin i think in two, 2016 signed a deal with like 13 mil guaranteed so they paid him like seven and a half already they're not going to cut him obviously he's going to be on the team but they don't they could cut him next year for sure I don't. I'm, nobody's scared of Travis Benjamin. Maybe you're a little scared of Tyrell because he has been in the system longer and has had a thousand yards in a season and has played pretty well, scored some touchdowns. He's a long, lanky, gazelle type dude, but he doesn't do what Mike Williams does as far as going up in the air. And this team's defense is ridiculous. The running game's solid. They're going to be in scoring position, and that's where Mike Williams is going to make his money is in the red zone and these tight quarters and going these back shoulder fades. This this is a chance for some t- some solid touchdown production here, this late, especially with the <clears throat> excuse me, especially with the Hunter Henry injury. Right, and it'd be yeah. interesting to see what this if what like Casey said to drop from seventy one to eighty five. It'd be very interesting to see what happens next month or two. The trickle down effect of the Hunter Henry injury if that eighty five just kind of weasels on back up into the seventies. It wouldn't surprise me one bit. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm definitely interested in some Mike Williams. I I liked him coming out of college um i think he's a good player i think he's he's lengthy and he knows how to use the length i I don't really understand why people were so down on this guy i guess because he tested poorly he or he didn't test he didn't run the 40 at the combine and then he ran like a four five five at the pro day yeah which is like a four six so he's slow yeah, I mean, I don't really care about that. When we talk about yeah. some of these bigger guys, Kelvin Benjamin is not fast. The, That's not what he does. The length is the separation, right? And you give Phil Rivers, and like you said, Hunter Henry goes down. And his there's an opportunity to see rate, what he can do. His contested catch rate in college was out off the charts, right? Deshaun made this guy look awesome. I think Philip Rivers can make this guy look awesome because, well, maybe he just is awesome. Yeah, right. Um, and he's the seventh overall pick last year. Like he's gonna get a shot. Yeah, he says he feels 100 percent healthy. Let's do it. Yeah, I think this is a good good spot to take a swing on a guy like that who's got a just this is a there's just could be so much potential. Growth. Yeah. Yeah, if you here. get a chance on him in the eighties, I think I like it a lot more than the seventy one, obviously. I mean, why wouldn't you? It's easy math, but the back problems are scary, you know, and they always will be scary. Ask Tyler Eifert how that's going. Um, so that was scaring me last year. All it takes is one game of you seeing this guy say, hey, that's my ball and that's my end zone and I'm taking that ball and I'm getting the end zone with it, and then he's going to be awesome. I mean, if, if people – if you I mean, if he had a really play, scary injury in college, and that was the neck. Sure, and He I, came I know. back from that and had a dominant season. Ab- absolutely. And slipped a yeah. tiny little disc. I'm sa- but I'm just saying, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. they add up. A neck and then it fixed it, and then the back, and then, know, you know, it's neck, just like – my back. Next sure. thing is – well, you know the song. You're, you're greasy. I don't know. So uh, it's – 
All it, all it takes is one game in the Chargers uniform and Phil Ribs throwing him the ball and him just beasting on somebody, pushing him in the helmet, throwing him down, just being like, get off me. And then everybody's going to be like, oh, that's the dude that played at Clemson, and he was awesome. Yeah. Tons of hate on this guy last year, which makes you like him even more. Right. Aaron Jones in this Packers backfield, he's leading the way at 83, up from 94. Huh? Then, then you have Jamal Williams at 105 from 131. So both of the Packers charging guys forward. are charging up. And then you got Ty Mountain, who was 143 to 120. So the Packers bump is back in full effect here. Everything's trending back up for these guys. Oh, Montgomery went from 143 up to 122? You're right. All of them moved up. All of them. Dang. No, this says Ty Montgomery 143 was 120. Oh, yeah, you're right. You're so right. Ty's Ty fall. Montgomery back down. So Montgomery fell. Let me double check that. No, I, he's at 143 right now. Okay. So Okay. Well, so Ty, Ty Fell, Jamal Aaron are up. Um, right. I'm, I'm just going to start off and then I'll go let you guys go. I think it's I don't see any reason why Ty Montgomery should have that big of a gap between Aaron Jones. If you like Aaron Jones that much like Ty Montgomery at 143, just give me the cheapest option for out of these guys. Yeah, I'm OK with any of them. But Ty Montgomery showed just fine out on the field last year. And I don't really quite understand why there's that big of a gap between those two players I like yeah, if it. anything like with it aaron jones and jamal williams benefited from aaron Rodgers not being in the lineup ty montgomery was crushing with aaron Rodgers in the lineup because he was throwing it to him yeah so i I'm, I'm with you i don't understand it i think i'm down two to take the the cheapest out of the three maybe the two cheapest out of the three yeah yeah um i have aaron jones and ty montgomery in in a, in a league and i kind of just wish i had jamal williams instead sure. <laughs> yeah but you know, Jamal Williams isn't going to get three straight goal line carries with Aaron Rodgers in there. You know, he's not going to get as not. many goal line opportunities. That is a they good don't, point. They don't yeah. run the ball inside of the 40, and Aaron Rodgers wants to throw a bunch of <laughs> they touchdowns. They don't run so it inside of the 40. Maybe that plays into more for Ty Montgomery. Well, know? at 143, that's basically 12-12. And at the end of the 12th round, I think that's an easy grab at that price for yeah. Ty Montgomery. Four. Yeah. Sure. No, like, yeah, 100%. No, yeah. This American no, yeah. language. No, no yeah. yeah. No, yeah, yeah. No. I mean, yeah. No. <laughs> All right, so Super. Carlos is all the way down to 98. He was up in the, like, I don't even know where he was. Carlos 50s. High. I didn't note it, but 50s, all the, he, Carlos is all the way down at 98 after getting paid by the Browns. They mm -hmm. absolutely bring in Chubb. They have Duke Johnson. I think this is super interesting. He was at 41 in December. 41. 51 in February. He's pretty cheap right now at 98. He's a talented. He's an RB1 talent, in my opinion. Right. Well, um, the 41 was, I, hey, I'm on the 49ers, and I got Kyle Shanahan, yeah. and I just caught 50-something balls, and I'm an RB1. And then the 51 start, oh, I might not be on the Niners anymore. And then not on, and, it, and in this process, the fit, all the way down to 98, like Casey said, that was free agency. Carlos went to be a Brown, and mm -hmm. some people weren't happy about it, but we were like, okay, well, you know what happens. And then, cool, then, then, cool, cool. And then the first day of the draft comes. You dodge a bullet. You didn't get Nick Chuck. You didn't get Saquon. And then second pick of the second round, you they get Nick shot Chubb. Right and, off the rip. Yeah, yeah. So that's um, now you got Nick Chubb. But Carlos, like, there's, there's, there is a chance that Nick Chubb comes in there and is just the straight up workhorse. And and I like Nick Chubb a lot. He's I got him ranked as like oh, third best running Nick back Chubb. in this draft, not in Rookie the rookie class. draft. Um, but most likely you paid a guy here. He's probably going to get you know maybe kind of like 12 snaps or 12 handoffs in his gut. He can kind of catch the ball. He dropped some balls last year, but he's, the hands aren't the worst. Carlos is a good player. If anything happens to Nick Chubb, or maybe he just can't figure it out the first year, I mean, Car this is going to be a fantastic value for Carlos Hyde. This is a good offensive line. Should be an offense that can move the ball and spread it around with all the pieces that they have like we've talked about. This could be a nice little pick for you at 98. I mean, if you have Chubb, I think you almost have to get Carlos. And this this really could, at the end of the day, end up being something that could really help your season at some point. A little Carlos. Yes. I don't know. And that then next year, next year he'll be somewhere else. Like that's true. I, I don't think you have to get Carlos if you're getting Chubb. I think not for dynasty. I mean, I guess ninety eight's a pretty steep handcuff there. I think. Yeah, but well, you're, you're paying a lot. Somewhere else. It's a one year thing. It's it's a fun pairing. I don't. I agree. It's not a definite. You need to get this guy handcuffed. He's too expensive for a handcuff, like you said. But it's a one year thing. Like if none if of those, goes none of those else. other handcuffs have ever done what Carlos Hyde's done, though. This is true. If something happens to Chubb, Carlos Hyde's going to crush. If something happens to Hyde, Chubb's going to crush. And next year, Hyde's got to leave. Like right. you know, unless something, unless unless something's wrong with Chubb, so. I, and there's, I mean, there's a good but chance. But at the same time, and he actually, right. it's more like 
there's, you know, 70, 30, maybe there's a chance for some of this season. It, it could. Yeah. I'm sure they're saying Carlos is going to take, you know, start the team is an RB, you know, is the RB one anyway, they're going to start the season that way. And that could change in training camp and preseason. If Chubb's like, I'm so I'm awesome, but there's a chance it starts out 70, 30 or 80, 20 Carlos's way. But then a couple weeks in, it might middle out 50, 50 and add in Duke Johnson. And now chart, there's a chance that Carlos Hyde and Nick Chubb both deserve to be on your bench. Right. Midway through the season. And we've for, talked about that with Nick Chubb. He could end up just being in kind of purgatory exactly. along with Carlos Hyde here. Yeah. If so, they middle it out, then neither one of them is good. Cause 12 carries ain't going to, 12 carries with Duke Johnson and Jarvis Landry taking your check downs. Carlos is not going to be, you don't want him in your lineup. But it's a be, it's a boom bust pick. But at a hundred, it pick a hundred. I'm I, I'm taking it because if Carlos Hyde goes somewhere else next year, he's still a, he's really a good player. And if he doesn't go somewhere, then that means and there's something still, probably there's happened. There's still a chance Chubb. to get something out of him this year. Maybe 12 carries with the catches isn't enough. But there could be he could have 20 carry games sure. for a good portion of this season. It's not it's not on. You know, no, he could get in there and be rolling, and the, and the Browns win a game or two, and then you know they obviously got Tyrod. He's a mobile quarterback. He's gonna make it easy for the running back. It's just the Chubb pick is obviously oh, just yeah. crushes everything. If there wasn't a Chubb, there'd be he'd be up at forty or thirty. Yeah. So, all right. So the big I think another big Galladay takes a huge tumble, and I don't really know what happened here. He was at seventy nine. He goes to one ten. Um, I I don't. That's shocking. I don't, I don't really understand this That's one. Shocking. I mean, I, obviously, you have Marvin Jones and Golden Tate. That there nothing still, changed, but that, that was, they were already there. That was that had nothing changed from February to now, except for Ebron left. Like, uh, if nothing, I don't get why I don't have any idea why Galladay, with all the obviously incredible buzz on Twitter, and you know, not everybody, but, but most of the I, I, I know I'm in these drafts. I know how Brian McDowell puts together these people. They get them off of Twitter. You know yeah. what I mean? So the people that are in these drafts are reading this Kenny Galladay buzz. I mean, like, how in the world do you go from 79 to 110? It might not be. You might not even be able to start Galloway week to week this year, per se, maybe even. But, I mean, I think there's a ton of potential there. And I maybe Golden Tate's out of there after this year. Maybe they don't extend him. Maybe Joe Marvin Jones hurts his ankle again. Right. And this guy's just, he's been awesome in his opportunities. I don't see why you wouldn't want to put this guy on your team. Yeah. I can't, I don't know what the 79 to 110 is. I don't get it either. I know you're a big, big Galladay guy. I think he can kind of do everything you want a big guy like that to do, plus some. Yeah. And some of my sure. practice swings Let's I've had, it. and a lot of my practice mocks this year already, I've had Marvin Jones and a ton of them. And then I've ended up getting Galladay as my fourth or fifth wide receiver. It's just, uh, hey, if something happens to Marvin, Galladay's there. Or if Galladay overtakes him, then fantastic either way. I mean, obviously, uh, Marvin Jones has played like our wide receiver one level last year and Stafford ain't getting any worse. He's only going to get better. He's, you know, just just like I said about Matt Ryan two years ago going into the season, Stafford's going in his mental prime now. It's not his, He's on track to be the most highly decorated passer in NFL history as far as yards, and obviously he started when the rules got changed and he had Calvin Johnson and all that good stuff, but dude had a couple of injuries to start his career, and he's been rock solid ever since. I love Kenny Galladay, and I can't believe he's down to 110, but that makes it a lot easier for me to get him on my team. Oh, yeah, 110, he's gonna, I'm going to be taking – Tons of shots on Kenny Galladay for show. It, yeah, but this is this is one of those numbers like it ain't gonna. Lie. I don't know why it's like that, but with the training camp pictures, I mean, it's not even there yet. But just the mini camp, there were, there's already the mini camp videos of buzz him, of him yeah. saying that he just looks like a like a just a he's, wily veteran yeah, and yeah. He's in his second year and this just carrying himself really well. Which you is won't you won't get him at yeah, all the drafting, reasons we loved old Kenny coming in. Right, if you're drafting right now, you get you take advantage of this dip. If there's any kind of dip in your league, grab him. Absolutely. Let's do one more. All right, let's do one more. Another and it's, dip. It's also another dip that doesn't make any sense. Um, how in the world has Cameron Meredith dropped from 105 to 135? Put like, him on my team, every single did, one of them. Did y'all think, like, do you, did the opposite happen? And was, right, did you he not, go from the Saints to the Bears? What happened here? <laughs> like, you guys were more excited about Trubisky and Allen Robinson over there in the Bears offense rather than Michael Thomas and Drew Brees? I'm yeah. not really sure what in the world's going on here, but if you're going to give me Cameron Meredith at that rate, is it just you worried about Traquan Smith? Yeah. What? Colby what, Fleener? What's going? What's good? He's out of there. He's not even on team. <laughs> they got him. Yeah. Oh, nice. Um, but I this this them. makes no sense to me. This guy's no sense. Yeah. Got injured in like week one last year. He's big, tall, athletic. Crazy after the catch. He's going to be 
a solid pickup been. for the. They went and snatched him up. It's not yeah. like they just. Yeah, they went and handpicked him off of the restricted free agency, and then it was a second round. Tender. If you're gonna give me, if you're gonna let me get Cam Meredith, it's my eleventh player. It wasn't a second round. Tender. Oh the original Lord. Big tender. y'all boys gonna be in for a long season after this startup. If I can get Cameron Meredith at one thirty five ish range, that doesn't even make sense. It yeah, doesn't I make can't any see sense. See how he dropped thirty spots. Going you, to the Saints. You just got you just got lined up with Drew Brees for a year or two, and now you like I get it. You got Michael Thomas on the other side, who's gonna get a ton of targets. But I mean, so what? Whatever. Yeah, and the backs this are gonna time get last targets year, for this sure. This time last year, Cameron Meredith was a 70, 70th ADP guy, and he was ready to crush. He blows his knee. That happens. That happens to everybody, actually. Yep. And now he's back. And guess what? He's with Drew Brees. Right. We talked about Juju Smith Schuster at the top of this thing at pick. 28 or whatever it is mm-hmm. he's got a b and he's got uh Le'Veon. Le'Veon, and there's a decent amount of attempts to and probably probably more than the saints at this point in time with the with the steelers probably have more attempts than the saints did last year okay um but it's really kind of a similar similar situation here where you got a you got a bunch of backs that are going to catch a, a or at least get around yes. the same amount of targets as yes. Le'Veon bell will won't be just with one singular guy right and you have a target hog receiver but give me Cam Meredith a hundred picks later for yeah for instead of Juju Smith Schuster yeah that's good I lo- I love it that no doubt about it the Saints will give more targets to their running backs as a whole but that's that's just how they play but yeah I mean Michael Thomas is an absolute stud and but you know he plays a unique type wide receiver like I, and just a minute ago Jay Wayne was talking about Mike Williams and getting the second corner for the Chargers because of Keenan Allen. But Keenan Allen, sometimes the way he plays, you, the teams don't even try to put their best corner on him. They're, they're, it's just because he's in the slot and he's moving around all over the place and he's so hard Which to Mike def- Williams can't you know? too. Right. Well, but Mike Williams is a lot bigger and not a lot less nimble than he played in Keenan the Allen. Nimbly, bimbly. He he's, played in the slot a fair amount in Clemson. That's different than playing the slot in the NFL. Meredith can but play wherever you need him. I just I feel, I feel like that you know Mike Williams. Uh, I mean. Uh, Michael Thomas is going to be just dominating the other team's defensive mindedness. The spread offense, the, the Saints. It's not a spread offense, but when they snap the ball, everybody spreads out. Yeah. You know, they'll be, they can well, be. When in you high watch formation. Michael Thomas, you're like, how in the hell is this guy wide open? I know that's what it's we, a crazy scheme. He's right. always it's just wide open. Yeah. You throw a zone at him, he's open every so time. You, he's got good moves. I'm not taking anything away from Michael Thomas at all. Just so now you're chasing Michael Thomas. Uh, you're chasing a young stud around, and you got Alvin Kamara to worry about. And now. Now Cam Meredith is in Mark, this. Mark Ingram, week five. Now you got Cam <laughs> Meredith to worry about. Yeah, that's Love crazy. It. And you still got old Ted Ginn. You got yeah. Ted Ginn's taking the top off over there, and veteran Ben Trusty Watson. Ben Watson, old veteran, Rusty Ben. Veteran Ben Watson's exactly Rusty, where he needs to be. Ben. Exactly where Drew Brees wants him to be. To you got to loop up Ben before every game if you want him to stick around. You need him to stick around. Was he like thirty eight? One hundred and fifty six. One hundred and fifty six. Thirty six years, years young. That's when they get good at tight end. Yeah, right after you ruptured your Achilles. Dude's going to be a stud. Oh, he'll be wide. He should be wide open and vacuum up some targets. I feel like Achilles is the new ACL. Everyone's just coming back from them things. It's tougher to get the explosion back off, especially if you're older out of the ben Achilles. Ben don't need no explosion. That's what I'm saying. I, yeah. That's what I'm. <laughs> we just said Michael Thomas is wide open. Yeah. Because he, of scheme, like, you can't, you can't cover all these guys. He's straight. All right. Well, shall we wrap this up? Yeah. Let's, uh, let's get out of here. Thanks for listening, everyone. If you're on YouTube, hit subscribe. If you're on iTunes, please go to the ratings. Give us a five star if you feel so inclined. Don't even have to write anything. You can if you'd like to. Hit us up on the Twitters at the FF Dynasty, at IMC Myers, at Dynasty Big Co., at Jay Wayne's World. We're also on any of your platforms of choice Podbean, Google Play, Stitcher, TuneIn Radio, iHeartRadio. Please and thank you. All for your pleasure. Pleasure. Till next time. You've been listening to the FF Dynasty's Pleasurable Married to the Game. (laughs) 